Kids are scaredy cats, and for good reason. Fear is the evolutionary response that keeps us alive. It's what makes babies wary of the things that might harm them, like creepy crawlies, or loud noises, or things they can't see. And despite its evolutionary purpose, most of the time, fear is learned. In fact, you might be the one teaching your kid what to fear. Through your own responses to needles, for example, or even the stories you tell about goblins and beasts and monsters. Fears tend to proliferate around age four, because this is roughly the age when imagination takes off and starts spinning those stories into scary possible realities. And somewhere around age seven to nine, kids begin developing the ability to question their own knowledge. So what they thought they knew about reality suddenly doesn't seem so certain. And by this time, kids may also have had experiences with difficult to understand concepts like death, leaving them trying to make sense of things they have incomplete knowledge of. And with this cocktail of factors, the propensity for fear escalates. So how can parents deal with this totally natural response when it's manifesting itself in an irrational fear of the glittery dinosaur lurking under the bed? First, reassure. Skip the explanations. In the moment, they just need security. But second, don't discourage. By brushing away a fear, you're invalidating what we've already established as a very natural and healthy emotion. And it's unrealistic to expect a fear to dissipate just because you said it should. Where you go from here really depends on the type of fear. If you're dealing with a fear of the closet-dwelling, glitter-wearing dinosaur persuasion, get your kid thinking. Fear actually shuts down our ability to think rationally, so you'll need to help by asking a lot of questions. Why is the monster in the closet? Do you think he wants to play? Maybe he wants to be friends. If you're dealing with a more mundane fear of, say, goats, then expose your kid. Exposing a child to positive, gentle representations of the object of his fear allows him to warm up to it. If it's a goat, perhaps read a story about a friendly talking goat together or take him to a petting zoo. Be sure to point out the similarities. See how this goat is talking? So is the other goat in the story. It means he wants to play. However, don't mistake this strategy for forcing a kid to interact with his fear. Forcing a child pet the goat he's terrified of will only make it worse. You'll have to use your judgment on how to make goats seem more friendly, approachable, and mundane without forcing the real thing on a terrified tot. If you're dealing with a more esoteric fear like a fear of death, downplay, but be honest. You don't need to go into detail, but do be honest. If your child is afraid of, say, a pet dying, it's okay to confirm the possibility, but focus on how unlikely it is to happen soon or how it's a part of life that happens to everyone eventually. Explain that his pet is young and has many more years of life left for them to play together. And one cardinal rule of childhood fear facing, don't make a big deal out of your child's fear because you'll only magnify it in an unhelpful way. The more matter of fact you can be about it, the more likely this product of his imagination will disappear into the Jurassic era. These strategies will see you through until puberty. From that point onward, kids brain chemistry changes and the chemical that gets released in response to thrilling experiences makes them actually feel good, which means fear becomes fun. Yeah, good luck with that. Suddenly, those glittery dinosaurs look positively cuddly by comparison.